There was a time, not so long ago, when the picture of human evolution seemed fairly well defined. Paleoanthropologists found fossilized skulls, studied their features by comparing them to each other, measured their cranial capacity with mustard seeds, and then decided what place the species occupied, in those classic drawings of the human march of progress. Then archaeologists digging up bones in the mountains in northern Spain discovered the fossilized remains of an archaic group of humans, unlike any other ever seen, now called Homo antecessor. Ancient proteins reveal that Homo antecessor was likely a close cousin to modern humans, Denisovans, and Neanderthals. The species name is a Latin word, meaning explorer, pioneer, or early settler. This name was assigned, due to the belief that these people belonged to the first human population on the European continent. Homo antecessor's modern-looking facial features have also puzzled anthropologists. However, this species name is highly debated, with many considering the remains to be Homo heidelbergensis. Whatever species they come from, these fossils are the oldest found in Western Europe. The species lived about 800,000 to 1.2 million years ago in Western Europe. Homo antecessor also hunted and ate others of their own kind, leaving behind the oldest known evidence of cannibalism. Everything was on the menu, including each other. But cannibalism is not a good long-term evolutionary strategy, so maybe that is why they went extinct. DNA, made of chains of nucleic acids, can remain embedded inside fossilized bones and prehistoric chewing gum for up to about 500,000 years. That time frame covers the rise of our species, Homo sapiens, sometime around 300,000 years ago. But before then, many other kinds of humans roamed the Earth, including our close cousins the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. Another early relative is Homo antecessor, known from northern Spain's Grand Olina cave. The physical features of Homo antecessor have left anthropologists scratching their heads over its relationships with other early humans. It has large teeth, as do more primitive members of our genus such as Homo erectus, but the shape of its face is remarkably similar to that of modern humans. The largest skeletal fragments, which came from at least six individuals and dated to at least 800,000 years ago, shared some similarities with modern humans, but were just different enough to defy classification as any known human species. Because the bones were among the oldest human fossils ever found in Europe, some researchers speculated that Homo antecessor may have been the elusive common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans. Of at least nine human species that walked the earth, a few hundred thousand years ago, two of them tend to attract special interest. The divergence between modern humans and Neanderthals not only holds an essential key to our evolutionary past, but it also brings us closer to the enigma of how Homo sapiens managed to wrest the European continent from Homo neanderthalensis. It has traditionally been proposed that Homo heidelbergensis, an ancestor of the Neanderthals, that spread through Europe and Africa between 700,000 and 300,000 years ago, could have also been ancestral to Homo sapiens, perhaps through another species, such as Homo rhodesiensis in Africa. Most researchers consider Homo antecessor to be part of an early and variable Homo heidelbergensis population. The problem is that it shares more traits with modern humans than it does with European Homo heidelbergensis. But some dental and cranial features suggest Homo antecessor is descended from the more primitive Homo ergaster, aka African Homo erectus. There are two scenarios for the evolutionary relationships of Homo antecessor to other species. Scenario number one, Homo ergaster gave rise to Homo antecessor in Africa. Then about one million years ago, Homo antecessor spread via the Middle East to Europe. In Europe, Homo antecessor evolved into Homo heidelbergensis, who were the ancestors of the Neanderthals and Denisovans. Scenario number two, Homo antecessor evolved into Homo sapiens, via an unknown species in Africa. In this scenario, Homo heidelbergensis is off the branch leading to modern humans, as it is the descendant of Homo antecessor. If so, African Homo heidelbergensis would require a name change, probably to Homo rhodesiensis. However, another paleoanthropologist is skeptical that Homo antecessor was ancestral to Homo heidelbergensis, interpreting Homo antecessor as an offshoot of Homo ergaster from Africa that disappeared after a failed attempt to colonize Europe. 
To further complicate the story, a French paleoanthropologist has postulated that human fossil remains from Algeria, usually classified as Homo ergaster, and originally named Atlantanthropus mauritanicus, are actually Homo antecessor fossils. This is because 14 of the 15 dental features listed for Homo antecessor have also been identified in the Middle Pleistocene of North Africa, aka the Middle Stone Age, around 800,000 years ago. This would mean Homo antecessor is the same species as Homo mauritanicus. But the Algerian fossils remains are much larger than Homo antecessor and dentally similar to other African populations. Nonetheless, some paleoanthropologists still recommend reviving Homo mauritanicus and to classify all specimens of this region as Homo ergaster mauritanicus. Homo antecessor has a unique combination of features in the cranium, teeth and lower jaw that are collectively different from other fossils rather than any particular feature that distinguishes it from others. These features show a mix of modern and archaic traits. Brain size is approximately 1,000 cubic centimeters, compared to 1,350 cubic centimeters for humans today. Body size, height, and shape are also similar to modern humans. The skull has many modern traits, including a modern-looking face, hollowed cheekbones and projecting nose. Archaic traits include a low forehead and double brow ridge, similar to Chinese Homo erectus, aka Peking man, and Neanderthals, and a protruding occipital bun at the rear of the skull. The teeth and jaws also have primitive aspects of dentistry, including very robust teeth. The modern-like face of Homo antecessor, strikingly similar to that of modern humans, may have a considerably deep ancestry in our genus. Indeed, the modern human may have face evolved and disappeared multiple times in the past, which is not unlikely, as facial anatomy is strongly influenced by diet and the environment. In other words, the modern-looking face of Homo antecessor is actually very ancient, and our species has retained it. Whereas Neanderthals are the ones whose faces changed more during their evolution. Either way, Homo antecessor is probably a better guide to what our direct ancestor looked like, compared to Homo heidelbergensis or Homo ergaster. Researchers were able to push back the time frame when the separation between our family branch and that of our European cousins was believed to have occurred, to sometime between 550,000 and almost 800,000 years ago which, apparently, disqualifies Homo heidelbergensis as our common ancestor. But if they were not the grandparents of Neanderthals and modern humans, then who is? DNA sequencing of early Neanderthals put Homo antecessor back in the spotlight, pointing to this species as an ideal candidate to occupy that position, just as its discoverers had suggested. This study was joined by a study of the dental evolution of several human species, including the Neanderthals. The results showed that the divergence between modern humans and Neanderthals must have occurred at least 800,000 years ago. Any later date would mean that the teeth of our European cousins had evolved at too fast a rate to be credible. The simplest explanation is that the divergence between Neanderthals and modern humans was older than 800,000 years. This would make the evolutionary rates of the early Neanderthals roughly comparable to those found in other species. In the genetic study, researchers sequenced the ancient proteins in the enamel of an 800,000-year-old Homo antecessor tooth, using the proteins to decipher the portion of genetic code that created them. But, after comparing the code with genetic data from more recent human tooth samples, they concluded that Homo antecessor's DNA was too different to fit on the same branch of the evolutionary tree as modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. The DNA study provides evidence that the Homo antecessor species may be closely related to the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. The features shared by Homo antecessor with these hominins clearly appeared much earlier than previously thought. Homo antecessor would, therefore, not be a basal species of the emerging humanity formed by Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans. Rather, Homo antecessor was probably a sister species of the shared ancestor that led to the evolution of modern humans and our extinct hominin cousins. One hypothesis is that Homo antecessor is derived from Homo georgicus, found in the country of Georgia, in 1.8 million year old deposits. These hominins are the earliest found outside Africa and are closely related to Homo erectus, possibly even a subspecies. 
but to confound things even more, analysis of a 1.8 million year old hominid skull suggests that most older human species, Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis, and so forth, actually belong to the same species. These ancient humans had brains one third to one half the size of modern humans, and have been lumped in with Homo erectus. But how could Homo antecessor be derived directly from such as primitive, small brained ancestor? Evidence shows there were multitudes of hominids, running around 300,000 years ago, and we are changing our paradigm for the origins of Homo sapiens. Instead of a simple progression, from one species to the next, many groups coexisted and interbred, leading to unpredictable evolution. There is also an issue of timing and geography. If our ancestor lived 600,000 years ago, that's at least 200,000 years after Homo antecessor lived, and the wrong continent. The ancestor of Homo sapiens has got to be something with a face more like Homo antecessor, but that ancestor has yet to be found. In short, the candidacy of Homo antecessor for the title of common ancestor of modern humans has yet to pass the proverbial test. For now, our human family tree will have to remain a tangled mess, rather than the straightforward progression we used to think. Now that's just true right there, that's just historical fact man, can't even argue that. Ha <laughs> ha